रोशनी का कारवां दिस पॉडकास्ट इज ब्रॉट टू यू बाय स्कोर फाउंडेशन Hi my name is George Abraham and welcome to Iwe Conversations my guest today is Kunal Mehta who is a master student at the University of Washington let me begin uh, Kunal by asking you you know you've done a MBA from uh, IIM Bangalore so how did you actually prepare for your MBA entrance and um, what was the process you went through because uh, though a number of blind people have done mbas now but it still seems to be a kind of elusive uh, space so your experience would inspire a lot of people in terms of my experience uh, preparing for mba i would say it wasn't easy um, it it required a lot of planning and support um, so i typically did not have uh you know access to math especially math content that is required for cat the level of math that is required or the understanding of concepts that is required uh i had to have a nuanced approach uh, a very focused approach so i spent almost a year uh, at least 8 or 9 months in uh, and, and i prepared rigorously uh, um i uh you know started from basics i had to pick up class 8 class 9 class 10 books and uh you know do some basic math before i got to uh cat problems or cat uh you know uh, the, the the kind of questions that were asked in the cat exam um english was slightly easier i mean in this easier in the sense it was more mainstream apart from the uh you know planning um i obviously needed a lot of support from volunteers because uh math uh content as such you know even if if you if you had the study material it wasn't very accessible so you know people reading out to me and even teaching me because conceptually i wouldn't get so many things if i read them on my own so so that that required a lot of uh, preparation planning and uh, support and um you know i was really happy when i uh, made it to iim bangalore it's one thing to get into an mba program and uh, the mba mba program is pretty tough competitive and uh, i don't think mathematics really leaves you even during the course how did bangalore uh, i am bangalore kind of uh, rise to the occasion to make you feel at home and uh, uh, be part of the the class yeah i i think they were really supportive uh, the fact that they had some blind students before me um uh, uh ensured that there was there was certain infrastructure certain material already set up um both uh, and and i i would say they were extremely supportive both in terms of culture and um the academic support that was required um you know for instance uh the main orientation that was done for all students in the first week that also had a session on disability awareness and that i think was very important uh you know i hadn't seen that in places when you know places that i had been to before uh before i am bangalore so um definitely you know they had the right policies in place uh um and and obviously you know the ground level support was uh, really good as well wherein you know material was provided to me in advance uh you know submissions in terms of assignments uh submissions in alternate formats uh was accepted um uh, again you know an mba experience is um as much about academics as it is about um you know your peers um and i think even the batchmates were quite amazing um and I, i mean i learned so much from them and sure they learned something from me as well but you know culture the conversations uh it was it was a very uh, a wholesome experience it was also first time for me out of my house i mean living outside uh, my house so 
um, you know, a hostel experience. Um, so as I said, it was very uh, wholesome and, and a supportive experience there. If you know of anyone with vision impairment who needs guidance on living life with blindness, please share the IWA National Toll Free Helpline number 1800532046. The number is 1800532046. So, where did you uh, land your first job and what was your role? From campus, I landed at the Adani Group as a part of their. Uh, uh, leadership program and I was uh, placed with Adani Electricity which which is in Mumbai uh, it typically uh, provides electricity or the utility to uh, about 30 lakh households um, so so in that sense you know it was it was a very impactful role it was a CEO's office role where I looked at customer initiatives um, um, so yeah and 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 it was super uh, 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 impactful, as I mentioned, um, the work that some of the work that I got to do, um, the the people I got to interact with, uh, you know, in terms of uh, getting to know the top leadership, um, you know, used to almost meet uh, the CEO of, of that particular company on a daily basis. And I think that that to start off, uh, uh, that to start off was was great in terms of exposure. So from the Adanis, you moved to a Museum of Art and Photography. It's a, it's an interesting shift. I came across this opening for an inclusion and accessibility lead um, at, at this museum. And, you know, I and then it said museum and then it said art museum and they wanted to make the space accessible and inclusive. I, as, um, I, as a child or I, as an individual, did not have much access to uh, museums that were accessible you know i would probably go go to a museum with family but you know just walk uh through the museum and and go home or or just you know you know hang around outside the space um and i thought this was an opportunity for me to create impact um and at the same time work at an work in an environment that was like a startup um you know i i knew i could uh, definitely make impact. So in your innings with the museum, uh, are there any memorable uh, initiatives that you kind of contributed to? Yeah, um, I think I helped make or, or design the accessibility part for um, many of the digital exhibitions. Um, they uh, they were a digital first museum because, you know, it was a pandemic and, and the actual museum hadn't opened. Um, that bit, the other bit, um, you know, slightly more on the HR front uh, that I'm proud of is uh, the internship program that we started for people with disabilities. So, you know, uh, typically this would be a six month internship for someone with a disability who wants to explore a career within the art space. Um, and, and this I think was super impactful. And uh, I think my contribution to the physical space, uh, uh, you know, where we had we got certain tactile artworks done for for certain um, um, you know exhibitions and um, for for certain uh, artworks that uh, that were already there and and you know it was unfortunate that I couldn't stay there uh, till the museum opened so the, the museum just opened at the beginning of this year and I had to leave like a few months before uh, but yeah really uh, happy with with some of the things we accomplished and and I think. Uh, you know, the other important bit is I help them establish a culture of uh, inclusion and accessibility. So you were uh, kind of getting in and getting absorbed with the role at the museum. What made you take the decision to do a master's and that too in the United States? Right. So I, you know, I would date on a day-to-day -day basis, work with developers, uh, web developers, uh, you know, to to help them understand accessibility, to, uh, um, you know, convince them as to why it's important. Um, and, and, you know, also work on overall user experience for, for different, uh, different kinds of visitors. And then I thought, 
you know, there are probably skills that I lack uh, as well that, that I can work on. And, and the idea of human computer interaction and human centered design, um, I know in the U S is, or, or, you know, this was about two years back when I thought about this was already big. Um, and I really wanted to do something in the technology space that was probably on, at, at pe you know, on people's side, uh, people's side of things, but within technology space, if, if, if I'm making sense. So, you know, I typically don't do much coding, uh, but then I want to design experiences that, uh, that, that people think are easy to use and that people find delightful to use. And, you know, then I applied to certain schools in the U.S. and and um, and and I got through the University of Washington in uh, Seattle. So, human-centered design. Uh, this sounds simple at the same time a little complicated for the common man's understanding. Would you like to unpack the idea of human-centered design? Typically, you keep the user at the center of anything you do. Um, you not only involve user at the end when they have to use the product, but right from the beginning, uh, right from, you know, when you plan something, plan a product or an offering or an experience, you you have the user involved. Uh, you, you think of the user, you uh, co-design with them um, and not just have them test something for you. Uh, I think this is the essence and, uh, we typically learn the entire process of how how you keep user and or or people who are using uh, your products at at the center of everything you do. And then when we talk about people and users, you know, it's not just the quote unquote average user, um, you know, who is um, um, you know a, a white male, urban, uh, you know, able bodied, uh, and 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 you know, it's probably easier to under you know design experiences for for such a population but then when we when we say human beings we, we mean different human beings uh, you know the the individual might have a disability they might have cultural contexts that are not uh, not the same um, they might have uh, experiences uh, you know that that might not be uh, at par with with somebody else um, and and how do we ensure that what we are designing is is equally usable and equally uh, are, are equally delightful for um, people with different experiences to use so yeah and 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 you know hence accessibility is a huge part of um, of the course that i'm doing and and um, you know it's just so happening to see how seriously uh, people take accessibility within the program as well so um, i presume that uh you are not only involved with this uh, course as a concept or as an idea of uh, human-centered design, but you also muddy your hands in actually creating uh, human-centered design, or is it more of a, a theory of HCD? No, it's mostly practical. Uh, we, we, create, we do projects, we do work on um, creating experiences, um, you know, Every course that I've taken so far in the last one year has had major projects uh, that that kind of uses this process to create experiences um, and and along the way uh, teach us as students um, you know the important nuances of of uh, following the process um, you know so as a part of the program again uh, you know just to highlight the practical bit I'm currently interning with. The Tasker Center for Accessible Technology, uh, which uh, is an organization that focuses on uh, uh, transportation solutions uh, for people with disabilities, and they they want to ensure that uh, you know the transportation data that is gathered is also representative of people with disabilities, because traditionally uh, you know people with disabilities have been very have been extremely underrepresented while collecting transportation data. So yeah, and I'm currently working on uh, designing a navigation solution for uh, people who are blind and visually impaired. Um, so so yeah, uh, definite practical angle to it. Uh, so Kunal, uh, uh, you've uh, been visually impaired since childhood or this is something that you uh, uh, picked up along the way 
uh, I've been blind mostly since birth. Uh, although I could make out colors uh, and certain objects when I was uh, when I was extremely young, let's say till till the age of six or seven. So, how did your parents deal with uh, your education and so on? Did they send you to a blind school or a regular school or home tutored you? What was the strategy they adopted? Um, I think initially it wasn't easy for them uh, because there was not much information available, uh, um, you know, in late 1990s, I would say. Uh, and, uh, and, and as I mentioned, it wasn't easy for them, but, you know, we, we found ways uh, and uh, they sent me to a blind school uh, uh, to start with. Um, so I went to a blind school till class seven and uh, post which I moved to a regular school uh, uh, closer to my place and and then you know I started going to uh, institutions that that were more mainstream and that were more that were well known um, I would say so so yeah I started with blind school but uh, you know then slowly I was able to I guess integrate into the society. To support our work with the blind and visually impaired you can visit the donate page on our website www.scorefoundation.org.in Please note www.scorefoundation.org.in Yeah, I guess uh, uh, getting JAWS and a computer is only the beginning or the tip of the iceberg. I think the challenge is to get content that is accessible. Uh, and in your case, uh, uh, how did you handle the content that you had to do in class? Um, so through my undergrad, where I, I did a bachelor's in business management, um, it was, I think there was a lot of trial and error where I was also learning about myself, what works for me, what doesn't work, you know, try using Braille in class, uh, try using Excel for accounting when you're trying to, um, uh, you know, uh, do some do some accounting problems, for example, um, take help from professors, teachers, uh, um, you know, uh, and and uh, also also take help from family members. So I I know, um, you know, uh, my sisters were married uh, by then, but you know they would read out things to me on phone uh, when I had exams, and and you know I didn't have access to certain material uh you know while while being in undergrad so um so yeah i guess you know you keep you keep uh looking for different solutions and you uh you just go with whatever works at that moment uh you know if, if there's an exam tomorrow if if somebody needs to read something for you uh and and there's no other option um i guess you you try and do that uh you know if you're at the beginning of the semester you try and you know scan books and see how how accessible they are and um, you know how much usable they are you also try and get slides or presentations from from professors uh, uh, and and uh, get some content from there uh, so you know yeah i, I guess I, I tried uh different things and maybe i became smart at figuring out um you know what what is it that i need what what is it that i need for the exam um you know uh, for an assignment, um, and, and, uh, get those th things right. Uh, you know, so yeah, I, I guess a lot of trial and error, I would say. So now that you doing this, uh, master's degree in human centered design, uh, if you do come back to India, what is the kind of professional opportunities that await you? Uh, you know, either in India or in the U S I'm looking at, uh, roles, within the UX research space, uh, user experience research. Um, um, I think uh, there's been, um, uh, I mean, I, I have this feeling that, you know, users or uh, uh, users of products too often are left with, with the feeling that they are not good enough when they're trying to use something. And this could be I, both technology and non-technology products. Um, and I think there's there are great insights uh, to be unearthed uh, in terms of what people want, what users need, what users like, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, their subconscious ideas of, of how uh, product should be. So, so I think uh, 
UX research. It's slightly more mature in the US, uh, slightly lesser here, but uh, but I'm sure it's picking up. And uh, I think it's it's something that I really like because um, I think I get to understand people and and you know their motivation behind uh, you know why they are able to uh, perform certain tasks, use certain products, and why not. So and and I really like that part um, when I you know uh, you know gain get their insights uh, uh, in terms of what works and what doesn't. So yeah, and, and then I get to have a voice um, um, you know for the user um, within the organization wherever I might work. Uh, so yeah, that that is something that I'm uh, kind of looking forward to. Sunal, you know, in the last. Uh eight, nine years in India, there has been huge strides made in the area of digitization and digital platforms. Uh, how far do you think uh, this digital movement in India has kind of uh, uh, helped people with disability? Um, I mean, I think it's it's helped immensely. Uh, I am a benefactor, uh, beneficiary of it myself. I mean, you know, I wouldn't have thought of booking a cab on my own and going or paying people, using banking, uh, you name it, ordering food, um, you know, you name it and uh, uh, and it's there, um, shopping. Um, but I also think that, the you know, it's, it's happening at a great pace. But um, at the same time, we also need to think about um, its impact um, on people with disabilities, because if... Um, you know, if if we move ahead and and do not um, consider this space or this population, um, you know, people with disabilities will again have a lot of catching up to do, which which would which would be unfortunate. Uh, but but I think this the stage that we are at, uh, you know, there's so much happening, and if if we can implement things at this stage, uh, 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 I see no reason why uh, you know people with disabilities. Will people with disabilities can benefit and and not just people people with disabilities benefiting but also brands uh, uh benefiting from from the spending power that they would bring in uh, so kunal we've spoken a lot about uh, your academic and your professional work what does uh, kunal do for leisure i like uh, reading i love following sport a uh, huge cricket and tennis fan um i I read mostly nonfiction. Um, off late, I've been reading little fiction as well. Uh, memoirs, self-help books, uh, some spirituality stuff. Um, um, and, and I love conversations, uh, um, you know, on, on different things. Um, I really like to talk to people, um, understand their perspective. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm a huge foodie as well. So I love food. Yeah. It has been a pleasure talking to you, Kunal, and wish you the very best as you complete your master's. And uh, let's hope that you find something which is challenging and uh, gives you the opportunity to make life more exciting for people like you. Thank you so much. This podcast was brought to you by SCORE Foundation. Amiga